Happy New Year, everyone! Did you all have a nice holiday season? Good. Well, I'm about to ruin it for you with a list of the absolute worst games released in the last 12 months. The rules are the same as they always are for these Worst of X Year videos, but it's been a while, so let's recap. A game can qualify for this list if it was released in 2023 in at least one territory and received a minimum of seven professional reviews at time of recording. This means that sadly, Skull Island Rise of Kong and The Day Before both miss out on being dubbed the worst game of 2023 because at time of recording, not enough outlets have bothered to review them. And honestly, we can't blame them. One final thing to note before we get into this is that Metacritic have changed their UI recently, and now it's complete poo-poo dookie. Therefore, it took our writer blooming hours to trawl through everything, so first off, hats off to her. And also, if anything was missed here, blame Metacritic, not our writer, because they've just made it that much more difficult to do these kinds of lists. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Right, now that that little rant is out of the way, I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst games of 2023. Number 10. Unholy. PC. 52%. We're kicking off today's list with a spooky game that's only actually scary because of just how bad it is. Developed by Duality Games and published by Hook Games, Unholy is a title of the stealth horror persuasion that puts players into the shoes of Dorothea, a young woman who must travel to a dark, twisted world in order to unravel the mystery behind the disappearance of her only son. Unholy's USP is Dorothea's ability to harvest emotions from corpses, which can then be loaded into a slingshot and used for a variety of purposes. Anger breaks things, shock unleashes bolts of lightning, desire can be used to lure guards, you get the picture. On paper, Unholy seems to have all of the ingredients required to make a spooky cake. Sorry, that metaphor got away from me there. But in execution, the game falls somewhat flat. Critics struggled with unresponsive controls, stupid AI, and insta-deaths that became really bloody frustrating after a while. Graphics-wise, Unholy looks fine, but thanks to janky gameplay, rubbish puzzles, and an utterly uninspired story, it's yet another game that's all blood-stained fur coat and no blasphemous undergarments. And with that horrible analogy, let's move on, shall we? Number 9. Xuan Yuan Sword Mists Beyond the Mountains, PC, 52%. We come now to a game that's actually over 20 years old, but has only just made its way to the West, though there are some that would probably say the efforts to localize it were completely wasted. Xuan Yuan Sword Mists Beyond the Mountains was originally released in Chinese-speaking regions in 1999. However, it was enhanced and translated, and then released for PC and Switch in July 2023. The story follows the Frankish knight, Septim, as he embarks on a journey to find the invincible arts of war. However, along the way, he's drawn into various local conflicts, as well as the machinations of the Dark Lord, Satan. Review scores bestowed upon Mists Beyond the Mountains ran the full gamut, with one critic giving it 80 out of 100, whilst another refusing to give it more than 30. On average, though, the game was thought to be fairly mediocre. The gameplay and art style were well received, but it was the localization that let the title down, as a great deal of the story's impact was lost due to shoddy translation. Unfortunately though, unless you're willing to spend years learning to speak Chinese, this version of Mists Beyond the Mountains is the only way you're going to be able to experience this hidden gem of an RPG. Number 8. Loop 8 Summer of Gods PS4 49% more RPG fun for you now, did you hear the air quotes, as we turn our attention to Loop 8 Summer of Gods, a game that's a bit like what you'd get if you ordered one of the Persona titles from Wish. The game's story takes place in 1983, in a Japanese town that's been overrun by demons. Players take control of Nini, a teenager who grew up on a space station that was destroyed by said demons, and who has the ability to read minds and turn back time, you know, like what Cher wishes she could do. 
Anyway, Loop 8 is a story-heavy RPG, so if any of you do decide to subject yourselves to it, expect lots and lots of reading, dialogue choices, and turn-based battles. Sadly, neither we nor any of the critics that reviewed the title can recommend doing so, as it has numerous flaws. Critics admonish the game's unrewarding combat, uninteresting tropey characters, bland storytelling, and the time loop mechanic, which proved to be little more than an inconvenience. In summary, Loop 8 has got lots of good ideas, but sadly, none of them are executed particularly well. Summer of Gods, more like Summer of Shoddy Video Games. <laughs> uh, got him. Number 7. Gargoyles Remastered. Switch. 48%. Here's another relic of the past for you now, and one that, by all accounts, should have stayed back in 1995 where it belongs. The original Gargoyles was released exclusively for the Sega Mega Drive and was an adaptation of the, frankly, pretty cool Disney animated series of the same name. Like the original, Remastered sees players controlling protagonist Goliath as he tries to put a stop to Demona, who's in possession of a corrupted magical talisman that can transform anyone who gets their hands on it. Platforming is the order of the day here, and so players will need to help Goliath to traverse each level, all whilst fighting off Vikings and robots. Confusing, but hey, it was dreamt up in the 90s. Gargoyles Remastered didn't exactly wow critics when it was released in October 2023, with most agreeing it was an okay remaster, but not worth picking up unless you were a massive fan of the series. In particular, criticism was directed at the game's often unfair design, which might have appealed to those who like a challenge, but not to anyone else. As well as this, it also had a disappointingly short length. Although then again, considering it's not a particularly good game, maybe the short length was actually a blessing. Number 6. Hellboy Web of Weird PS5 46% if done well, beat-em-up video games can be a great deal of fun, but if the developers fluff it, they can end up a boring, repetitive mess. Hellboy Web of Weird falls into the latter category. As you might have gathered, Hellboy Web of Weird stars the titular hellish lad who must explore the strange planes of the weird in order to find a missing BRPD agent. Gameplay is of the hack-and-slash beat-em-up variety, and levels are procedurally generated, which might be of interest to all the roguelike fans out there, until the roguelike fans remember that the game is on this list. Most outlets agreed that Web of Weird looked very nice, with one reviewer even going as far as to say the game offered the best visual representation of Hellboy outside of the comic books. That's a quote. However, as we mentioned previously, nice graphics and art do not a good game make, and aside from its visuals, critics felt that the game had very few redeeming qualities. Repetitive gameplay, an unrewarding progression system, repetitive gameplay, sluggish combat, repetitive gameplay, uninteresting lore, and repetitive gameplay all held Web of Weird back from greatness. Whilst fans of the comics might get something out of it, there's little on offer for anyone else. Hellboy, more like Oh boy, what a rubbish game! Oh, that's the second godam on this list. I am on fire! Number 5. Crime Boss Roque City PS5 43% when a game boasts a cast including the likes of Chuck Norris, Danny Glover, Michael Madsen, and Danny freaking Trejo, you would think it would at the very least be passable. Crime Boss Rock A City does indeed feature all of the aforementioned famous faces, and several others to boot, and yet despite all its star power, it still managed to be one of the worst games of the entire year. In this first-person shooter, players assemble a team of criminals and head out on missions to infiltrate various targets, gather as much loot as possible, and then get the heck out of Dodge. The rest of your team can be made up of either AI or human chums, if you can find anyone willing to play this piece of hot garbage with you, and the longer players take to seize their loot, the more likely it is that the cops will show up. 
Bad writing, wonky stealth mechanics, buggy gameplay, and underwhelming performances from the star-studded voice cast were all complaints levelled at the game by critics, with many comparing it unfavourably to the likes of Payday. Suffice it to say, there were a lot of things about this game that were rocky. Like, like rocky. Number 4. Quantum Error, PS5, 42%. Titles such as Alien Isolation and Dead Space have proven that setting a horror game in space can make for a terrifying experience for fans. Clearly the folks behind Quantum Error played these games and thought, huh, seems easy enough, think I'll have a go at making a space horror game too. But unfortunately, whilst the ideas may have been there, the execution for this one was way off. Released in November 2023 exclusively for the PS5, oh, lucky them, Quantum Error tells the story of Jacob Thomas, a firefighter who must deal with the threat of both space monsters and space terrorists using his firefighting equipment, which apparently includes a gun because everyone knows the best way to put out a fire is to shoot it. That's why they call it a firefight. <laughs> Critics weren't impressed with Quantum Error for myriad reasons. Multiple publications praised the art style, and some were impressed with the game's overall atmosphere, but unfortunately, its shoddy AI, bad checkpoint system, poorly written story, and variety of bugs completely let it down. There might be a good game in there somewhere, but flip if we can find it. Put simply, the only error here was the decision to release the game. Number 3. Testament – The Order of High Human, PC, 41%. Are you in the market for an action-adventure title with just a dash of RPG and Metroidvania elements? Do you also hate yourself? Then by golly are you going to love Testament The Order of High Human. This one landed on Xbox Series, PS5, and PC in July 2023 and puts players in control of the immortal King of High Humans. And if you're wondering how there can possibly be any tension in a game where the protagonist is immortal, well, then it would seem we're on the same page about this. A slightly underwhelming premise is the least of Testament's problems, however, as critics lambasted it for more or less everything else it did. The combat, which constitutes roughly 80% of the gameplay, was considered utterly lacklustre and tedious, the story bland and confusing, and many felt the game went on for far too long. Throw into the mix a few glitches and you've got a recipe for a game that one reviewer described as, quote, Elder Scrolls, but make it hurt. Ouch. We might as well take this moment to remind you that if you're looking for a good Metroidvania, Metroid Prime Remastered also came out in 2023, and that one is definitely worth a look. Do yourself a favour and don't play Testament. Number 2. Grey Hill Incident, PC, 38%. You know what's worse than a bad game? A bad game that looked quite promising prior to release, but ended up totally disappointing everyone who'd been looking forward to it. Grey Hill Incident is one such letdown. Before its June 2023 release, Grey Hill Incident was featured on a number of lists of hotly anticipated horror games, but sadly, it failed to live up to the hype. The game sees players stepping into the conspiracy-loving shoes of Ryan Baker, whose son is abducted by aliens. By hiding in bins, yes, really, and smacking the aliens with a baseball bat, Ryan must try to save his boy and help out other residents of the town of Greyhill, each of whom are having extraterrestrial problems of their own. To be a successful survival horror game, you have to hit a lot of marks, and I think it's fair to say that Grey Hill Incident missed every last one of them. The premise may well have been interesting, but the writing and voice acting were diabolical, the plot made next to no sense, the stealth mechanics were entirely unsatisfying, and of course, the whole thing was filled to the brim with glitches. I can only assume that the incident referred to in the game's title was the developers utterly pooping the bed. And number 1. The Lord of the Rings Gollum, PS5, 34%. Wow, God, I didn't see this one coming. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? We all knew this was gonna happen. Released in May 2023, The Lord of the Rings Gollum follows the titular creature as he attempts to find Bilbo Baggins and retrieve the One Ring. 
Drake. Players control Gollum in various different locations from Tolkien's works, such as Sirith Ungol, Barad-dûr, and Mirkwood, and must traverse the environments all whilst avoiding the forces of Sauron. The game was panned by pretty much everyone that had the misfortune to play it. Reviewers criticised the camera, mission designs, user interface, graphics, and the numerous bugs present in the game. It was so bad, in fact, that developer Didalic Entertainment issued an apology, though it was later alleged that this had been written by ChatGPT. God, it just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Oh wait, no, it does get worse. In October 2023, German publication Game 2 released a report that claimed those working on the game had been subject to forced overtime and abusive leadership and had received less than minimum wage for their work, meaning not only is Gollum the worst game of the year, but but Didalic and publisher Nacon were probably amongst the worst game companies of the year as well. So congratulations, the Lord of the Rings Golem, for being the most abhorrent game of 2023. Now how about you make like your namesake and throw yourself into the fires of Mount Doom?